Healing Ministries. Hope everyone's doing great this evening. Um, I'm coming to you with a very quick video. Um, this is only going to be a few minutes. But I wanted to share something with you that um, the Lord showed me a couple of nights ago, about two nights ago only. And it's real quick, real simple, real to the point. Um, no, not too much interpretation is really needed regarding this, but I felt that it was important enough to put up so that um, people could hear it. So here goes. So a couple of nights ago, um, about the, approximately two nights ago, um, I was given a vision in the middle of the night, which is typically when the Lord speaks to me. And I saw a dragon in front of me, um, a red dragon. And he was in front of me and he was just kind of flying around in circles or so, you know, just kind of prancing in front of me. Um, there wasn't anything necessarily unique about this dragon except that it was red. Um, he, when we think of a dragon, biblically speaking, we think of um, the dragon that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 12, which, you know, that John saw, which he had seven heads and ten horns. So this dragon did not have seven heads and ten horns. It wasn't the dragon that's mentioned in the book of Revelation um, that John saw. However, it was a red dragon. And we know that the dragon also represents Satan. Um, and and I just want to make sure that I clarify that what was presented to me was not China, because we also know the symbol for the dragon is also the nation of China. But this is what the Lord told me. As I saw this dragon flying in front of me, um, kind of just flying around spinning or what have you, um, the Lord said to me, he said, I am releasing this dragon upon the earth. And I said, what what is this dragon and he says this this dragon is the spirit of war and he said to me that it was the same spirit um that was released that caused the world war world war one and also world war two that also resulted in the holocaust and even the nuclear war um with japan he said it was the same spirit and he said that he was releasing it upon the planet and that this spirit, he said, causes chaos and confusion amongst the nations. And also it deceives the nations um, to, to I, um, I guess, to lure them into war. And so this is what he said to me. That was all he said, um, that the dragon was being released, the spirit was being released upon the planet. Um, so not just a particular nation, um, you know, or particular location, but over the entire planet. And that this spirit is the spirit that brings war. So um, I just wanted to share that with you all and let you know that um, war is coming, um, which I know is coming anyways. I mean, there are multiple wars that the Bible talks about during the last days. Of course, Jesus told us himself that in the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. Um, we've seen many wars in our lifetime. Our parents and our grandparents even have seen wars. Um, but we know that things will increase as time comes. We know that there are wars that um, are promised like Armageddon, which would happen during the tribulation. So this is not what I'm. Um, well, I'm not saying that the spirit won't have something to do with the tribulation and you know Armageddon, but that's not what this is emphasizing. Um, the world right now is in the spirit realm. The the nations are being prepped war and you know war can be anything from civil war to nuclear war to to world wars um we're looking at a situation um right now that is definitely developing um that is matching ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 in fact after the two nights ago when he um showed me the dragon i actually went back to study chapter 37 38 and 39 of ezekiel um, just because I've been watching this for some time now, and I know that it's all lined up, um, you know, Ezekiel 38 and 39 is God and Magog. 
um, which is different from the Gog and Magog that's mentioned after the millennial reign um, during the time, the, which is the final battle after Satan has been released. Those are two different wars. Um, when you do in your scripture, do your study in regards to it, because there is a fraction of people that are left um, after Ezekiel 38 and 39. Um, but when the war, when the people come up to war against Christ on his seat in Jerusalem, those people are all the fire God comes down and consumes all of them. And then we go into the mystery of the eighth day, um, which is no time. So two totally different war, wars as you study your scriptures in regards to that. But Gog and Magog, um, I believe, is we're on the pre precipice um, of that war because um, Ezekiel 38 and 39 are very specific. Um, they call the nations out by name. Those nations are, are lined up together. We've got Russia, we've got Turkey, we've got Iran, we've got Syria. Um, Put in Kush is what is modern day Libya and even the Sudan area. And if you haven't paid attention, um, both of those countries, Sudan and Lebanon, not Lebanon, Libya, um, have been in the news lately. And if you don't know, both Libya and Sudan, um, well, Libya doesn't quite have a leader yet, but um, they're reforming their government. You know, they kind of went down into the pits after Gaddafi was killed in, I think, 2011, I believe it was, and they went down into the pits. And, you know, we had the issue with Benghazi in 2012, um, which happened in Libya. But they are reforming the government. And anyways, my point is this. Uh, Russia is also involved with both Libya and with the Sudan and the Sudanese president who's been in power for like over 30 years at this point. Um, I just seen a recent picture of the Sudanese president with um, Bashar Assad, which is the president of Syria and also with Vladimir Putin um, just recently. So Russia is building their alliance, and um, and then they have Turkey and they have Iran, um, as well as Syria behind them. And this is all the the list that's in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 of Gog and Magog, and all of the people that um, they list in there. Um, and I do believe that that's what is building up, and um, I believe it will be over um, in regards to this oil that is in the Golden Heights. Um, and so it's, you know, going to be really interesting. Go back and study chapter 30 and 39. Um, a lot of people get destroyed. And interestingly, the Lord talks about how he's going to defend the land of Israel, and he says it's two different things that um, is very specific there. It talks about um, it talks about the natural disasters. Um, basically, he talks about flooding them out, and he talks about an earthquake. But then he also talks about fire and brimstone. And, you know, that fire and brimstone could be like Sodom and Gomorrah. You talk about an asteroid with some type of volcanic explosion. But what I really believe the fire and brimstone represents is nuclear war. And it talks about how it'll take them seven years um, to burn all of the weapons. And um, if you look at the scripture, the way it talks about the wasteland and it takes them seven months to bury all the bodies and that even if a bone is sticking out, they would have to mark that territory. It's actually like indications of some type of like radiation or nuclear war. So anyways, um, when you have time, look at study Ezekiel, well 37, 38 and 39 all go together. Um, because when you get into chapter 40, it is another, you know, time and place from, you know, in the 24th day or something, another year, another time. Um, but 37 is, and 38 and 39 are all together. Of course, 37 is the dry bones, which is the prophecy of um, God bringing back um, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, from the four corners of the earth, um, which the beginning of the fulfillment of that prophecy happened in May of 1948. That prophecy has not been completely fulfilled because the promise is that he would bring all of the Israelites back to that land, all of them. So we know that every Jew, every true 
person that is of that bloodline, um, and I'm not talking about religious aspects, but the actual bloodline of the descendants of Israel or Jacob um, are not living in Israel currently. And so we are only at the, we're only partially fulfilled that prophecy, but um, I do believe that the circumstances that have occurred just in the recent years um, with the rise of anti-Semitism, especially in Europe, um, is pushing the Jews to go back to Israel. Um, and the last country that has the greatest concentration of Jewish people is America. And they're very comfortable here. But if some of you all follow me on the Watchmen on the Wall website that I have or the link that I have to my Faithful Wall Killing Ministries um, website, um, then you know that several months ago I put out a dream that was given to me about the rise of anti-Semitism happening in America. We have to remember that at the end of the day, the scriptures tells us that every nation will rise up and turn against Israel. There will not be one nation that will be allied with Israel and God will defend her. Um, and it's more so the land, you know, is more than the people because, I mean, the people too, but the people get judged because unfortunately the truth is that the people, the majority of the people in Israel are wicked and they're, they're living sinful lives. I mean, Tel Aviv is considered the homosexual capital of the world at this point. And they, the government funds abortion in Israel. Um, there's a lot of wickedness. There's a lot of segregation. There's a lot of um, hatred towards Christians um, there. Um, there's a lot of things that are going on in Israel. It's not the pretty picture that a lot of people have this euphoria and this um, a fantasy about what Israel really is. Um, I mean, it's in 2012, and this is my little short testimony, then I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I looked in 2012 into making Aliyah and um, was looking into maybe doing a dual citizenship myself because um, you have to have maternal grandparents that are Jews, and I have that and, um, and paperwork and proof of it. And so I, I looked into um, getting dual citizenship. But when I found out in 2012 um, what you have to go through, you basically have to deny Christ. And in addition to that, when they do the, the government does the investigation on you, if they like, they do this like, you know, background check, like any country. Um, and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a, um, a popular figure, you know, public figure, I guess you can say. Um, so it doesn't take much to find out about me. You can just Google my name or what have you of the ministry. And you'll find all kinds of stuff about me. So they could easily look up and find that I am a believer in Christ. And just based off of that, they could deny me um, citizenship or residency in Israel. So I looked into all of this back in 2012. And based off of that, made my decision not to um, go into Dulce or look for or not to basically try to move to Israel or or have citizenship there. So there's a lot that um, we don't pay attention to. I know we as Christians, especially in America, we like to, we, we live in this euphoria a lot of times. And we look at one thing and we like to paint this, you know, rosebush picture and everything is, is not rose bushes. And um, everything is not always even what it portrays to be in this sense. So, but however, Jerusalem and Mount Zion belongs to God, and it is the place where um, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is going to return, and his foot is going to set upon the Mount of Olives, or Mount Zion, and he is going to reign there for a thousand years. So, it is his protected territory. However, he must judge the land. He must judge the people just like he has to judge the world. And before all of that, he has to judge the church. And um, that's where we're at right now. And so I just wanted to give you all that heads up. That is the most recent thing that um, 
the Lord has given me um, the spirit of war um, and the, and the um, image of a dragon, which again represents Satan. And I know there'll be somebody trying to interpret this 40 different ways, but so I want to make sure that I give you the interpretation based on what the Lord has given me. So there's nobody out here trying to say, well, it could be this. It could be. It's, it's not China. It's, you know, not specific. It, it is the spirit of war as a whole. And, and like the Lord, again, what the Lord said to me, it's the same spirit um, that was released upon the world um, or the planet um, that caused World War I, World War II, you know, um, the other wars that have happened as well but he's he didn't name like vietnam or 9 11 he actually specifically said world war one and world war two so that means that there's going to be multiple nations involved and again um i told my husband when i came out of the experience later on in the morning because this happened in the middle of the night which is typically when the lord speaks to me and shows me things um, but later on the next morning when my husband was leaving for work i told him i said i i just woke up with this um, this understanding in my spirit that it was going to involve Israel, that what was coming, this war, this spirit that was being released um, has to do with Israel. Um, last thing, I said last thing and I'll let you go, but even when we go into Revelation chapter 12 and 13, well, um, not so much 13, but 12, when John talks about seeing the sign in heaven, Remember that particular dragon, which was this dragon with seven heads and ten horns. Remember, he goes after the woman, and the woman represents um, Israel. And, you know, she flees into the desert for 1,260 days after she gives birth to this male child that's caught up to heaven. Um, there's a lot of interpretations in regards to that. We're studying the book of Revelation. We have been in there for like four or five months now, or five or six months now. Um, we've been going over it in our online Bible studies on Thursday night and just, you know, really combing over um, the Re the book of Revelation and what God is saying in this hour. So anyways, I'll leave you with that. Um, as with all things, take this to prayer. Um, we, we really need to prepare. We are on a precipice, um, the brink of a major shift. So we've crossed over. Nissan One has Come and gone, we're entering into this season of unleavened bread very soon. Um, begins at sundown next Friday. Um, we're entering into the time of Passover and an, an unleavened bread, which we uh, honor here um, with Faithful Walk Healing Ministries. Our group will be um, joining us next week um, to honor Passover, our ministry, um, which is a, one of our biggest events for our ministry um, each year. So. We are in a new season, and in order to understand the times and the seasons, we, we have to be on key. And unfortunately, we're not understanding the times and the seasons, and we're out of season. And because of that, we're missing uh, key words and elements and prophetic things that God is saying right now. And he's not saying um, build houses and and build build businesses and and um, build churches, million dollar churches. This is not the season for that at all. This is a season where you better stock up spiritually and physically. Um, that is the season. It's not the season. This this, this is not a season to um, to sell. It's not. It's a season where we need to gather, uh, reap, and store. So I'll leave you all with that. God bless all of you all. Um, until next time, good night. Shalom. Shabbat shalom.